when you start to work on those tasks on a weekly basis, what's different? How, how, do you, how are you looking to then well, use the information and, and track and control that on yeah, a weekly basis? On a weekly basis, you're no longer pulling, now you're pushing. Uh, and sometimes you're really pushing. Um, <laughs> but but the, the whole point of the weekly check-in and planning work on a weekly basis is accountability. Uh, because uh, you want to hold yourself accountable, but you especially want to hold other people accountable to deliver their promise to you uh, mm -hmm. when they said they would, so you can do your work on a timely basis. And that's how the weekly work plan works. And it's a way of keeping everybody informed. Uh, and if we didn't meet our commitment, why did we not? We need to figure out why, why, why. And, and being able to manage those tasks in a, in a simple Kanban board, yep. we, we've seen the visual nature and the simple drag and drop and the filtering of just this week's tasks, removing a filter to be able to aggregate and see everybody's tasks, yes. just so that you can go through that workflow, um, checking off what needs to be done and making sure, as Dan said, everything that was captured in the pull plan is then tracked and controlled and updated so that everyone knows where it, where it is, where things are. And Kanban's a great way for design teams. Yeah. Absolutely. So we had a couple of case studies. They're very quick. One of them was a pretty fun exercise, which was a lab study. We had two teams, Team ATB, and they went through two exercises, one of them running just a traditional process where they got started, and then we evaluated the um, issues afterwards. And then the second one, and they switched over, the second one was when they actually had a communication about sequencing, and then ran in those mini phases. And it was astonishing. We saw a 73% reduction in the number of challenges, the issues that were resolved, that were needed to be resolved. So that was kind of a big aha moment. And um, Dan and I actually had the opportunity to run this in real life as well. Life, so the, yeah, yeah. the second case study was a multifamily uh, design build project, which actually we had the perfect opportunity where we had two projects running at the same time, yeah. the same teams, and we could implement this workflow on one so we could really study. It doesn't really happen that often, so it was no. very, very lucky for us to get that opportunity. Dan, did you want to talk about well, some yeah, of the things? Yeah. The owner's hypothesis was that traditional design management, the SDDDCD, follows a large batching process, and that makes information build up and a lot of assumptions that are out of date, and misunderstandings then become a root cause for most of the waste in design and construction. I think that's a good thesis, that it jibes with my experience uh, and it results in incomplete and late design. And so the theory, uh, which worked out as it turns out. We didn't hit the 70 odd percent, but no. so 53% on a real live job and two months early, it was pretty, pretty, pretty pleasing. Good. Yeah. yeah. 